has my hair. Good. <laughs>
I Love Voiceover Lisa asks, do you ask your folks to submit different reads in their auditions and decide which ones you would like to pass on to the client? Or do you want one read and if you get two, you delete one? I want as many reads as possible, basically. Um, you know, we share the direction that, that we received. Uh, and sometimes I'll add my own. Uh, you know, oftentimes I'm on the phone with the client even, uh, and they happen to mention something, or I just get a vibe that I go, you know what, they're looking for this or they're looking for that, and I'll add to it. But otherwise, you get the direction. Uh, and sometimes there's conflicting direction or talent have their own, wait a second, I, you know, I'm pretty sure I think this would work after you've been doing this for a while. You get a good idea of, uh, you know, what you think might, uh, might work. So if you want to do a couple takes, uh, go for it. I mean, there's more opportunities to, you know, impress the, uh, impress the client if you've got a range and, you know, some different things you want to do. Uh, and I don't have time to edit everybody's auditions. Uh, you know, I can't go in and say, oh, well, there's two reads or three reads. And talent will say that oftentimes too. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you could reorder if you want. Like, well, that's great because I, I, was, I had nothing else to do today. So I'm just going to edit your <laughs> stuff for you, Matt. No. So if you want to do a couple takes, let them know in the slate. Be quick with your slate. Like, don't annoy people. Uh, but, you know, Bob Smith for Coca-Cola, uh, two different reads for you. Or uh, I have an ABC for you. Real quick. And then that lets them know... Um, you know, what to expect. If they hear your first read and they think, eh, it's good, but, it, you know, no, or it was close, but no cigar, um, they know that there's more reads coming. Otherwise, they might not know. So, you know, they're playing and they go, well, that was close. What else do they have? Oh, well, they told me right at the top, you know, there's going to be two or three reads. Um, and then they'll keep listening. If your first one stinks up the place, they're, they're just, uh, they're probably not going to uh, continue to listen, especially if they're getting a ton of auditions. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, I'm not sitting there, you know, cut and paste people. Um, you're on your own for that, guys. Yeah. You know, on that topic, I like to hear your slate a little bit different than your actual audition. That sometimes gives the client another option to be like, I don't like the way you did the audition, but I love your slate. We've had slates before. We were like laughing or uh -huh. we're like, we wanted to hire the person just off of the slate. There, there's two competing uh, schools of thought on that. One saying, uh, you know, do your slate like the read. Don't jar them. Uh, and then other people say, hey, let, your slate is like a free uh, audition, basically. You throw that in there. You know, you do your thing, and then maybe you're doing the character for, uh, mm -hmm. for something you're auditioning for. Or you're slating in character, and that's interesting. If you're trying to be somebody else in your audition, like I had an audition that the client wanted a real teen, so I read everything like I was a real teen, including the slate. And when I got the job, I kept it going. I, I, I was a teenager during that session because the client actually believed that I was a real teen. Uh, uh, um. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. Yeah, but I mean, that, that's an example where she didn't even ask about slates for God's sake, this is a tangent. What did you ask? What, what did she? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully we answered your, uh, your question in a roundabout sort of way. Next. So, Tamara Ryan asks, is it cool to ask your agent how often they submit your stuff or does it come off as needy? Is asking for feedback on the bigger auditions okay? Um, yeah, is it cool? Yeah, it's cool. Um, I mean, it's, if you're cool with your agent uh, and you've got that, you know, you've got a good relationship, I know in some places a little standoffish, maybe they're repping a billion people. Um, but yeah, you know, ask them, how is this? You know, what do you think? Is this good? Am I off the mark? Uh, there's been talent that I've been a little like, man, I, you know, I don't know what's going on lately. And then, but I don't want to say anything because it's, eh, you know, it's a little weird sometimes. Uh, again, because, you know, everybody knows it's subjective. Uh, but then, you know, they ask, so what do you, and they're like, well, since you asked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the thing is, you know, you might have gotten that audition from a bunch of agents. So if they go, you know what, this one really wasn't for us, they might not come out and, you know, and tell you. But if you ask and you say, well, all right, if they're not going to submit me, uh, you know, I'll submit it through one of my other agents and then I'll have a shot, you know, and your other agent might, uh, they might love it. So, um, or, you know, your agent just thinks you, you suck in general. They're not, you know, they're not a fan. They took you on for whatever reason. They liked your demos or some of your previous work and they're not happy with your reads. Uh, you want to know that. So, you know, as much as you would be asking about a, a specific uh, audition, um, 
you know, that'll give you kind of a general idea. If they're not into you, you know, if they listen, I, I think we should just be friends. <laughs> <laughs> if they're, you know, if, if they're really not uh, feeling what you're, what you're doing, uh, the chances of them, you know, cutting you are going to be a lot higher. So yeah, you know, uh, find out. Tech problems. And you know, we notice that a lot. That's uh, probably, you know, one of the biggest reasons that we, we get back to talent, whether they ask or not. Uh, but usually talent will ask, too. Or they tell me, or they're like bragging, oh, I just got a new beep bop bloop bloop And, uh, We're you know, how does... We're making lots of robot sounds this yeah, time. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, how does it sound? And then we listen more critically. Um, but other times, you know, something's just set wrong and they didn't listen back or they're like, oh, I'm doing this one from the road out my ass because it sounds really like absolutely like horrible. It sounds fine, right? No, it's pretty, no. Um, so anyway, yeah, if in doubt, uh, ask. But, you know, if you're going to be uh, on it with every audition, you know, you know, how is this? How is that? Do you love me? Uh, yeah, that's going to be needy. But otherwise, you know, keep that, uh, uh, keep a line of, uh, of communication open. Mm-hmm. Okay. Steve Schleicher? Schleicher? Schleicher. Schleicher. Steve Schleicher asks, are clients reluctant to hire someone that is relatively new because not many others have hired them before? Yeah. Man, I, you know, I, that's, uh, I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, with, uh, you know, when you're new, uh, you don't really know what's going on. Um... I mean, if they're coming to an agent, they expect vetted talent. They expect talent uh, that know what they're doing and that have a lot of experience. Uh, you know, and they've, they've been around the block many, many times. Um, and there's just things that you can do as a talent that's been around, regardless of whether you're a better actor or a competent actor, but just because you've experienced things. You know, you're not going to flip out when the, the source connect drops or, uh, you know, you're used to... Um, dealing with people who are difficult when giving you direction because last minute copy changes. Yeah, exactly. It, you know, you remember when you first started, and that stuff would happen, and you were like, "Oh my god!" And you, you know, you kind of freak out a little bit. Um, you know, a lot of times they, you know, their time is valuable as well. They want to get in and out. Uh, and somebody who's new, it's just going to be very difficult for them to do that through no fault of of their own. Uh, I mean, you know, they're just they're green. Uh, so if they're going to a pay-to-play or something, they know that, you know, it's a free-for-all. It's really, you know, anybody uh, with a USB microphone can can, uh, can be on there. But if they're going to an agent, half of the reason, not half, but, a, a, you know, a big reason that they're they're coming to us is because we've done that legwork for them. And we know uh, the folks that we're putting in front of them, uh, they know what they're doing, you know. So you're not going to hire a, like a doctor you know, that just started. <laughs> so, you know, like a plastic surgeon. As the rest of your life, you're like, he's just starting out, but he does great work. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's it. That's all we have uh, for today. Again, uh, you have questions, put them down in the comments below. Uh, we'll answer your questions on an upcoming episode of The Outspoken. Uh, make sure you subscribe so that you know uh, when we have a new one there. Been, uh, about every week we've been pretty good at it. I could do mm -hmm. pretty much anything. Keep us motivated. Regularly for like a month until I get sick of you people. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Beep, bop, or... beep, 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 beep. Thank you. Come again. <laughs>